Oh, definitely come in person. Oh my gosh, no. If you have the option to go to a conference, go in person. That's the whole point of conferences. Hi, yesterday I showed you a function that converts year month day to weekday three times faster than the standard way. And it boiled down to this magic function here that gets module seven much faster than the built-in operator. So to, today I'm going to explain how this magic works. So it has to do with octal numbers, but let's start with something more familiar. Let's start with decimals and modules nine instead. So here is one ninth in decimal, and the ellipsis means that the digit one is repeated infinitely many times. And I'm going to multiply that by zero, and I see that the first digit of the dot matches modulus nine. No, nothing excited about that. But it works also for all the multipliers. Now, it's a bit tricky. We might ask what is going to happen next. So certainly the modules will reset to zero. And what happens to the, the product? Well, nine times M is one, so it also resets. And it keeps going like that, so it just matches. And we can accelerate, but that works because we are using infinite precision. Unfortunately, the machine cannot do, use infinite precision. So the best thing we can do is to take an approximation. And I suggest here an approximation by excess with four digits. And we are going to do the same exercise. So far, so good. But as soon as we multiply by one, we have a problem. The fourth digit after the dot got wrong. If you have, were using infinite precision, that would be a one. We got a two. But then let's go. Now is the third digit of the dot that is wrong. At some point, it's right again. But then it's wrong again and will stay wrong. But let's accelerate. Now is the second bit that is flipping between right and wrong, eventually stays wrong, and then boom. Now the first digit after the dot no longer matches the model. So, but it did up to that point, right? So what if I want to go beyond 125? The obvious thing to do, there are two things to do. The obvious one is to take a better approximation of one ninth. So I suggest one with five digits after the dot. So same exercise, you know where this is going, now is the third, it's becoming scary, it's getting closer, it's getting closer, and oh, fine, so far so good, ah, there we are. So, but it did show that in taking more digits, enlarge the range for which the first digit after the dot match the modulus. So, that's almost all I have to say about decimals and modulus nine. But the crucial point here is that the divisor nine is one less than the base 10. So it suggests that for module seven, we should use octal numbers. So here is the same exercise. Here is one seventh in octal and approximation for that. It's, it looks very familiar, doesn't it? So same exercise, let's go, you know how it's going to end. So let's accelerate, it went up to 685. And we know how to get to enlarge the range for which the first octets after the dot match models. We just need more octets. So I suggest taking 11 and I'm highlighting the important one because it's from there that we are going to extract the models, okay? But octal is just disguised inside binary, right? So every three bits correspond to one octet. So this number M in binary has 30, 33 bits after the dot. But the last one is zero, so we don't need that. So it has 32 important bits after the dot. And that number can be also written in that fractional form, but the divisor is just a power of two, so the division just move bits around, we don't need to do that operation, we just keep track where the important bits are. So this number here is the important one, and we know that after the multiplication, we have to discard the 12, 29 rightmost bits. That's why the magic function had a right shift by 29 bits, and we re remain with just the three. So 
But since nobody writes magic numbers in that source code, we can backtrack and see how we got here. So that's the expression for M, which in decimal is that. So the magic has been revealed. Thank you very much.